Hey YouTube, I'm Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over all the studio strobes from Godox that tie in with the Godox X series. Before we get into it, if you like today's video, please hit that like button so YouTube knows to share it with others, and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. If you've bought into the Godox X series for their battery operated portable strobes, you may have also considered their AC strobes for use in the studio. But a quick trip to their website leaves you quickly confused because there's 5 different series of lights and 17 total models. So I figured I'd make a quick video highlighting the differences between these 5 different series of lights. That way you can pick the light that's best for you. First, let's go over how all of these lights are the same. There are a total of 5 series, there is the QT2, the QS2, the SK2, the DP2 and the GS or Gemini 2. The two in all of these means that they're compatible with the X series and can be controlled by the XT32, the X Pro trigger, or the X1 trigger, or the equivalent rebrands from Adorama, Pixapro, and others. And it also means they're gonna have compatibility with all of your favorite battery operated strobes, including the 8200, 8600, 8360 version two, and all of the speed lights. All five series of their studio strobes offer a 150 watt modeling lamp that can be dimmed from 5% to 100%. And they all have the same stable color variants of 200 Kelvin, meaning from 5600K they could flex to either 5400 Kelvin or 5800. 800 Kelvin. All of these are powered by plugging them into the wall, so there is no native battery for any of them, although you could plug them into a battery pack with an AC adapter such as a Vegamon. Lastly, all of the strobes that we're going to talk about have a 0.1 stop manual control that you can use, but it's not compatible with any of the X series triggers. They really need to add that 10 stop control to the custom functions for use with these lights because it's really a pain to offer that and then not be able to communicate that using their X series triggers. All right, so that's how they're all the same. Now we're gonna go over the nuances of each one. Let's start with the standout flagship model, the QT2 series. I have a dedicated video on the QT600 II, which you can watch here. There are three power levels of the QT series, a 400 watt for $549, a 600 watt for $599, and a 1200 watt for $799. This light offers the fastest recycle time and the shortest flash durations. So this is the light that you wanna to go to if you want to freeze fast moving subjects in studio. It recycles full power in just under one second, even for the 1200 watt version. The shortest flash duration that the 600 watt can achieve is one 19 thousandth of a second. And yes, that's T.1 flash duration. So you can get some crazy action freezing with that strobe. The 400 watt is even faster at its minimum power. In the high speed flash mode, which is that fast, really short flash duration, the color can vary really widely. It can go anywhere from 5400 all the way up to 9000 Kelvin. So this isn't gonna work really well if you're using multiple lights to freeze the subject because those colors are going to vary so wildly. The QT series is the only AC strobe that offers the masking function the stroboscopic or multi-mode and high-speed sync. Not just all of them, it's the only one that has each of those features out of all five series. Color temperature in HSS does range from 4600 to 5000 instead of the 5600. Although I don't think anybody would be using high-speed sync with this in studio when it has the freeze flash option. It just doesn't make sense, the freeze option is way better for freezing subjects. The masking function is a tool for mainly product photography in which you can advance your flash between shots. So as you advance and take photos, the first image it will shoot all your groups, the second image it'll take your A light, the third image it'll take your B light, and so on and so on. And this allows you to create masks because only one light goes off that makes it really easy for clipping your subject out of a background. And lastly, this series of lights is the only one that'll go down to a minimum power of 1 over 128. So it's the only one that has that 8 stop power range. The others go down to 1 16th or 1 32nd power. And for exterior, the QT series definitely has the flagship build quality. You can tell it's their most heavy duty and well built strobe. One last note about the QT series, if you're using the 220 volt version in a different country outside the United States, then you actually get even faster minimum flash durations out of it. So it's even faster at freezing subjects if you're using that higher voltage outlet. With the QT out of the way, we can talk about the other four that share some things in common. First off, they all have a maximum flash duration of 1 800th of a second at their highest power and 1 2000th of a second at their lowest power. None of these are going to have the multi-mode HSS or the masking function. And unlike the QT, they all have a proportionate modeling lamp option in which the modeling lamp will increase and decrease as you increase and decrease the flash power. This is 
is good if you have multiple lights set up. You can actually see the modeling apply to the flash power. So you can get a better idea of how the flash is gonna land on the subject even when using multiple lights. Next, we'll talk about the QS2 series. This is the second most expensive line and has four models. A 400 watt for $210, 600 watt for $319, 800 watt for $359, and 1200 watts for $519. The QS is billed as their most reliable series. Its lowest power setting is 1 over 32, and its max recycle time at full power is 1.5 seconds. The build quality is still really nice on the QS series. You can tell that it's still a cut above the remaining three series of lights. But with it sharing so many other properties and studio lights not usually being subject to a ton of abuse, I think the QS series is best suited for those looking for a really powerful 1200 watt light, but don't need those high speed features that the QT series offers. Following that, we've got the GS2 or the Gemini series. Let me preface this by saying that I don't actually have the Gemini series. It's the only one of the five series that I don't actually have a copy of. There are three models of the Gemini series, the 200 watt for 115, the 300 watt for 139, and the 400 watt for $179. Looking at the specs, the GS2 is almost identical to the QS2 series. It has the same 1 over 32 minimum power and the same 1.5 second recycle time for all the models. The only difference that I can spot is the weight, with the 400 watt model being 1.3 pounds lighter than the equivalent QS400. Both the pricing and the lower weight leads me to assume that this is simply a lighter weight, less durable, lower build quality version of the QS2 series. Another note, if you get the 220 volt of the GS series, you will actually get faster recycle times. They go down to about 1.2 seconds for maximum power recycle. Next is the DP2 series. There are five options here, 300 watt for 145, 400 watt for $179, 600 watt for 259, 800 watt for 289, and 1000 watts for $319. The DP series does have a minimum power of only 1 over 16. The max recycle time varies between models. It's about 1.2 seconds for the 3 and 400 watt version, 1.5 seconds for the 600 watt version, and about 2 seconds for the 800 and 1000 watt version. This series is great if you want some serious power for not a lot of money. 1000 watt strobe, 319 bucks, that's a heck of a deal. Lastly is the SK2 line which has two models, a 300 watt version for only $109 and a 400 watt version for $139. This is the most budget friendly option available and it's very similar to the DP series. It has a minimum power of 1 over 16 and it recycles in just over a second, about 1.2, 1.3 seconds. So if you don't need a ton of power then this is the best choice if you want to spend as little as possible. Okay, that's a lot to digest, so here's my read on all of the options. If you want the best, the QT2 series is definitely the way to go. It simply has the most functions with that high-speed sync, stroboscopic mode, and the masking function. It's also the only one with that crazy flash duration. So anyone looking to work in action, freezing action, whether it's in products or portraiture or athletes, whatever it is you're trying to do in studio that's freezing action, then this is the one that you need to get. Out of the other four, deciding is mainly a choice of build quality, price, and wattage. If you need the max power but you don't need those freezing options, then the QS1200 version 2 is the highest powered version available. But the DP1000 is right behind it in terms of power, and it's much cheaper. And if you don't need a lot of power, then I would definitely look at the SK version 2, that 300 water for 109 bucks. That's awesome, and you don't even need any triggers if you've already got the Godox X-Series equipment. Godox could really clean this up, guys. I mean, if you just combine the SK and the DP series, even if you still have five lights, um, just combine those two series and offer them under one. I mean, they have all the same specs. And then just get rid of the Gemini series because it's not different enough from either the QS or the DP SK lines. Getting down to three series, just having budget, mid-level, flagship, that would make it much easier and omit a lot of the indecision that comes with having so many options. Hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and you can join my photography gear chat group on Facebook if you want a place to chat with me and thousands of other photographers. Until next time, keep on shooting YouTube.